hello people welcome back to my channel pucky talk and uh, i was away for some time the people were asking why am i not making more videos and why am i not completing the whole chapter well um uh, as i might have told you i am undergoing training right now in surgery and believe me the calls and all the duties are so long and so hectic especially because now that uh, covid-19 uh is in full swing and uh, earlier on our opds and wards were closed but now we are doing elective cases as well so the schedule is really hectic and um i have not been able to um make more videos but now i'm going to try and fit uh these videos in so that we can complete the chapters fast all right so now the next part of this uh, chapter is the metabolic stress response to surgery and trauma the ebb and flow model okay so this is the crux of the whole chapter that what happens when the body undergoes trauma when uh, the body undergoes surgery so the in the animal world or if uh, if we look at uh, what happens in nature is that the natural response to injury includes immobility or rest followed by anorexia and catabolism and these changes are designed to aid survival of moderate injury in the absence of medical intervention so this is what happens when we do not uh intervene and a, an animal or a human being is injured they will rest they will not eat and in the end there will be breakdown so in 1930 sir david cuthbertson so this uh, name of the scientist this can come up and who proposed the ebb and flow model that was sir david cuthbertson and he divided the metabolic response to injury in humans into ebb and flow phases okay so the first part of the response to injury is ebb phase which is a protective phase in which um uh metabolism decreases and the body saves energy for recovering okay and then they can ask in mcq how long it lasts for so it lasts for approximately 24 to 48 hours and uh, it is characterized by hypovolemia decreased basal metabolic rate reduced cardiac output hypothermia and lactic acidosis so hypovolemia decreased bmr hypothermia and decreased cardiac output these are the four characteristics of ebb phase and it lasts for 24 to 48 hours the next thing is what are the hormones that regulate the ebb phase so they are the catecholamines cortisol and aldosterone okay and then we come to the next part which is the flow phase okay now in the flow phase there is mobilization of body energy stores for recovery and repair okay and then it also replaces lost or damaged tissue so it is characterized by tissue edema increased bmr increased cardiac output increased body temperature the opposite of these four things along with tissue edema and increased oxygen consumption and increased gluconeogenesis okay so hyperthermia hypervolemia increased bmr increased cardiac output tissue edema gluconeogenesis increased gluconeogenesis and increased oxygen consumption so the question in the mcq comes that how much bmr is raised in flow phase so the answer is 15 to 25% okay 15 to 25% and how long does it last for it lasts for 3 to 10 days this is also an mcq okay and then 
we have to divide the flow phase into an initial catabolic wave which lasts for approximately 3 to 10 days and then an anabolic phase which may last for weeks so this is the part of the mcu that i'm going to that i was talking about earlier and how long will does the catabolic phase of the flow phase last it lasts for 3 to 10 days and anabolic phase lasts for weeks uh, so this is the correction to the earlier statement all right so yes 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 so this is um, a diagram i have made in the first 48 hours everything goes down and then catabolism and all that flow phase starts and it is divided into catabolic phase and anabolic phase all right 